So you've heard about BPC-157 and its ability to help with gut issues, speed up musculoskeletal issues like tendon, ligament, and muscle tears, and also its ability to help with cognition. Now you're stuck though. Should I be doing BPC-157 orally or should I be doing it by injection? Well, today we're going to go ahead and break that down. All right, first off, let's talk about BPC-157. What is it? Well, it is a naturally occurring amino acid sequence that is in our gut. And some of the first research that came out was done in rodents to help with Crohn's, colitis, and ulcers that were induced by NSAIDs. And the research showed very promising. Thus, then more research started to come out with musculoskeletal issues like ligaments, tendons, muscle tears, etc. But we also started to find out that it reduces inflammation and actually increases angiogenesis, which is the creation of new blood vessels, thus giving more new blood, which enhances recovery. Side note, BPC-157 is not regulated or approved by the FDA, so please proceed with extreme caution. If you plan to use these, make sure you're working with a practitioner, not medical advice. So first, let's start with BPC-157 oral. And the short answer to the question is I almost always start with BPC-157 oral and then possibly try out the injection. And the reason for that is most people know how to take a pill. It's super easy. It's super convenient. Where with the injectable, you're having to draw it up and mix it. Most people know how to take a pill. And then if you're taking a pill and it's going into your GI system, and most people nowadays have some form of GI issues, leaky gut, dysbiosis, and that leads to systemic inflammation. So while maybe you have a shoulder issue, it could be the cause or it could be making it worse. So by starting with BPC-157 orally first, you could be healing your gut lining and thus reducing systemic inflammation and helping with a musculoskeletal issue. We also know the importance of the gut-brain axis. We produce more serotonin in our gut than in our brain. Brain, and that's the happy hormone. So we want to make sure that that gut brain axis is working properly. BPC-157 might also reduce inflammatory factors like TNF-alpha and reducing inflammation not only in the gut, but systemically not only helps with musculoskeletal issues, but also can help with things like brain fog and skin issues. And so in my clinical experience, I have great results when patients start with taking the oral. So why would I go with something like the injectable when it's a little bit more complicated when we can stick with something easier like the oral? Now, con-wise, there are a few things to be concerned about with BPC-157, both oral and injectable, making sure you get a good sourcing. That's why I use Level Up Health. However, if you do have GI issues, you may have problems absorbing the BPC-157. Also, if you take it with certain foods, this may also impair its ability to be absorbed. So just a few things to think about. Now, talking about it via injection. One of the better things almost always about injection is you're going to have, most often, higher bioavailability. So 500 micrograms via oral and 500 micrograms via injection. The 500 via injection is going to be more potent. And if you have something like a shoulder issue, and injecting it next to the shoulder, you're going to have a higher concentration next to the injury or wherever you're trying to get it. Now, the research is very sparse on this, but anecdotally, it does seem like a lot of people give the feedback that if they're dealing with a musculoskeletal issue, injecting it locally seems to work slightly better. And this could be just placebo, but who cares? The other thing is, is that BPC does have some minor analgesic, meaning it helps with pain. So if you're having some pain in your shoulder, actually injecting it locally may do a slightly better job than taking BPC orally. Con-wise, and these are the reasons that I tend to stay away from the injectable. One, again, is going to be sourcing it. Now, one of the bigger issues when you're injecting is you have your skin for a reason. Your skin is a barrier. And so when we decide to go around that barrier, that leads to issues. Anytime you're doing a subcutaneous injection, it can lead to an infection and lead to something like cellulitis. So if you're not using sterile techniques, at least alcoholing the top of the bottle in your shoulder, we increase those chances. So sourcing it, making sure you're getting high quality source that is sterile also contributes to making sure that we don't get an infection. Also, once you get it, many people have difficulty figuring out, okay, if I have two grand, how much water do I add in? Because then you got to be able to do the math to figure out a proper dosing structure. You also need to know how to draw up and to inject. And then if you want to do a localized injection, say that you hurt your thumb and you decide, oh, I'm going to go ahead and inject some BPC right here below my thumb, not knowing that you could be injecting it right into your your radial artery. Not a good idea. You're going to have a bad time. Not only that, after you mix the BPC, then you often need to keep it cool in a safe, sterile environment. And typically the injectables are most often more expensive. And so that's why often in my clinical 
practice really preserve that for only intense cases with patients that know what they're doing or they have someone like myself there to walk them through those steps. So overall, my clinical approach is almost always starting with the oral form. Simpler, it's easier, and there's less risk of something going bad. The oral form seems to be better, especially for gut issues to begin with anyways. And then with that being said, though, if we have the right circumstance, I do believe that injecting locally for a musculoskeletal issue might lead to slightly better outcomes. So that's something that I talk with the patient about and advise them on all the benefits, side effects, and the risks. And if you made it this far, you're probably curious about dosing. Most often with the aura, I like starting at at least 250 micrograms, often 500 micrograms, taking that orally once to twice daily, and often moving up to 500 micrograms twice daily for a couple of weeks, and then we assess. Injecting, we can usually do about half of that. I often do 200 to 300 micrograms of injection once to twice daily, depending on the extent of the injury and where it's at. Combining BPC with diet and lifestyle factors, like if you're dealing with an injury, maybe a little bit of turmeric, maybe a little bit of fish oil, rest, ice, depending on the situation, can definitely help speed up the regeneration process, whether that's in your gut or whether that's in your shoulder. So I'd like to hear your feedback on my approach. And if you have one that's similar or slightly different, please leave it in the comments below. And if you made it this far, I think you'd like this video that I just did as well. Until next time, stay vigilant, my friends, and God bless.